What's going on everyone? Welcome back to version one. Now in today's video, we're gonna be going through why I think you should consider buying a Mark IV Megane RS right now. So, let's roll the brand new intro and let's get to it. So just before we jump into today's video, I just want to give a shout out to Richard Mann for putting that sequence together um, and Dex Saunders for the original music, for writing and recording the music. I'll leave their socials down in the description, um, but yeah, cheers guys for helping us out. The new sequence looks sick. For those of you guys that are new to the channel, this is my 2019 McGann Mark IV RS Trophy. Bit of a mouthful, I know. And there are other models which we will get into in a moment. But I've had this car now for over a year. Um, and I've done some mods and stuff which we might brush over in this video, but like I say, that isn't the point in this video today. What I thought we'd go through today is reasons why I think you should buy a Megane Mark IV, whether it be an RS Cup or the Trophy. Because as far as the hot hatch scene goes, there's not a huge amount on offer what I feel gives you the excitement that something like this does, whether that be the automatic or the manual. Um, obviously, depending on what you're looking for in said hot hatch, will determine whether this is the sort of car for you now brushing over obviously i feel like the elephant in the room i feel like renault's and like some of these hot hatches do get looked over um especially like i see a lot of um a lot of the us guys i don't know if they're hard to get hold of over there or they don't even do them over there but the us guys don't seem to be as on it as far as hot hatches go as we are obviously they had the focus rs and the st and stuff but um, as of recent, I remember, I think it was North America or something, they, they're not going to have the RS models at all there now, which sucks for those guys. Um, but yeah, got off on a tangent. These cars, obviously, and if you have a Renault and you're watching this and you already have one of these, you know these aren't the sort of car for straight line speed. Now, don't get me wrong, they're no slouch on a straight, by no means. Um, they've got plenty of go in them and stuff, but when it comes to the package of a Renault Sport, they've never been known for their straight line speed, all the way back from Renault 5s to whatever, up to V6 Clio's, yeah all right they had some go down the straight, the V6 Clio was a bad example because they were known to be in ditches probably in a local town near you, um, but apart from that, normally Renault Sport the formula is pokey engine of some variety, nailed handling and like you know like a, the ultimate chassis balance and handling balance. So that was one of the reasons why I ended up even messing around with Renaults in the first place because I got a 172 Cup. When you drive these kind of cars, these Renault Sport things, there is a certain magic to the way that they, the way, the way that they, they act, the agility and the precision that they have in handling and in the way that they drive. Like I say, they really come. It's hard, hard to explain. If they, they've got like multiple personalities, like especially something like this, like obviously. This being the Mark IV Auto means it's a cruiser. I can just cruise along in auto, fairly quiet because of the valved exhaust and stuff like that, and you know, and be, and be done with it. But if I wanted to get into it, hit the race mode or sport mode, shift over into manual, um, I'd like do the uh, shifts myself, and really start getting into some B roads or something. If these cars really come alive when you take them on a B road or even on track. That's a lot what a lot of guys do with these cars. You know, they. They have the ability, like they might have had a family or something, and they thought, oh, I need to be a little bit more serious. So they get themselves something like this, four doors, big boot, all that sort of stuff. But when you go to the track or to the back roads and you hit it over into sport and manual, and you really start getting into it, you really realize what these cars are made of. You know, you'd really have to push one of these super hard to get into a mistake. Um, I'm not saying that you can't do that, but when you see there's endless videos on YouTube and going around from the car reviews and stuff like that where people putting these 
at the, on the absolute knife edge, but they can just dance them around. Obviously, they said the four wheel steer can be kind of something to get used to, which I do I do agree with. That can be something you have to get used to. That can catch you out maybe sometimes. Um, but overall, the package of a Renault Sport is what I'm trying to say. The package is decent engine, amazing handling, great chassis. And they've been known for it all the way through um, with a couple of anomalies, like the V6 Clio, I will say. Um, but these cars are, like I say, that multiple personality thing allows you to live multiple lives, if, if you will. So you've got your family car, jump, stick the kids in the back, that's all got Isofix and whatever, and then the big rear boot. But then when you're out on your own or you're out with one of your mates, you'll be like, oh, you check out what this can do. And then you can flick it over and, you know, like I say, get into a B road or get, in, get even go out on track and stuff, and like I say, and it just becomes a completely, completely different car. Why does that mean that I think you should get one of these cars? Well, to start with, obviously, this is nothing against all the other cars. Like I say, I'm a huge fan of the German cars and all the stuff like I love an i30N. I don't know why, but I think they're really cool. Um, I haven't actually driven an i30N, but I would like to, so if anyone watching has got one, hit me up. It all depends what you're looking for in a hot hatch. If you're looking for straight line speed and you're looking for like unreal launches and stuff, this is not the car for you straight away. You might as well click off the video now because this, like I say, this is no slouch on a straight and this will surprise some people, but you've got to be moving, especially with being front wheel drive and stuff like, and obviously this is remapped as well. So from a dig isn't its strong point, but in sport it will get moving. But if you were to come up to the lights against a Golf R or something like that, you'd get absolutely pantsed because there'd be, I've, I've, I've driven a, it was like a stage one Golf R and that thing was mental from a dig. You wouldn't even get anywhere near it. It all depends on what you want, but why do I think you should get this over some of the other newer cars well i think this is one going to be one of the last other than being one of the last renault sport car to come off the line as renault sport have shut their doors now so if you want to see a little bit more on that give it a click on one of those corners and we'll get into that a little bit deeper but the renault sport brand being no more means that rs is no more and that means that these kind of um, formulas of a car aren't going to exist for much longer um it depending obviously on how the laws come down on people that already own these cars and stuff like that and if they force you into electric cars we just don't know the future so you have to enjoy these cars while they're still around one thing that drew me to these initially was exclusivity there's not many of these about on the road take of that what you will whether it be good or bad um it's one of those things like i've seen i've driven past one more of these in just over a year of owning the car and I, that's including car meets. The exclusivity part is nice because when you do drive past, people are like, oh, what's that? You know, it is a real head turner and it's got real good road presence that we'll get into in a moment. We'll pull up and have a look at the visuals. But as far as the driving experience goes, if you, with Renault Sport, you either understand it or you don't. Um, and if you like to drive and you're not bothered specifically about beating everyone in a straight line and making it up in the corners, Renault Sport cars are for you, 100%. When, especially when you look at the other models as well, you know, like the Megane Mark III is a completely different formula as far as the engine goes. Obviously, it's a two liter. Um, so you, arguably, I would say that's definitely straighter, uh, faster in a straight line, the RS3, um, the Mark III, the RS3? They're definitely faster in a straight line. <laughs> Something that I do stand by is this car is a great looking thing. Now, especially in, like I say, in a world of Golf R's and Audis and whatever else, and I'm not saying they aren't good looking cars, but these definitely stand out in a good way. You know, the rear lights are completely unmistakable, especially at night, the way they run all the way through, basically through the boot lid. And the fact that these are so wide, even when I got it in a standard, this thing had some serious road presence, like no joke. This thing is so wide standard, and now I've obviously spaced it and lowered it and stuff, it looks even bigger. Um, and it's it's funny seeing people's faces because they do look as if to be like, well, what is that? I don't think there's many cars on the market that look as good as this. Obviously, that is personal preference, but like I say, this thing turns some serious heads. So let's pull up and we'll have a little walk around. So here she is. Apologies, obviously, for the wind and stuff, and I just thought I'd take advantage of the sun being out. But look at this thing. 
call me biased, but look at look at the way this thing sits. Obviously, the wide arches. Someone actually come up to me and asked me, he was just like, are these arches standard? And obviously he didn't know much about cars and stuff, but the aggressive the aggressive nature of this car, I think it's just like a lot of it's a lot of straight edges for a hatch. Um obviously the max and adds to that and stuff, but just the way this thing sits, look at this thing. Sheesh. That sounds like I'm obviously tooting my own horn with this car, but there is, like I say, there is very few things I'd be rather be in than this at the moment. But it's just, it's just such a special car, and it gets the appreciation that you wouldn't expect as well, especially when you go to car meets and stuff. People will come up, and you will see people looking around it and stuff and checking it out. But um, yeah, it's nice to have a car that people respect, and obviously Megan, the name the Megan is known for being an absolute monster around a track and this thing is absolutely following in that path. These are the trophy wheels that I had done all in one colour, all in a satin black instead of um, the uh, diamond cut finish which I'm not a fan of, never have been. Um, so these are just the standard trophy wheels in black. The 280 wheels are slightly different which I'll leave up here for you to see between the 280 and the 300 the differences are not as obvious um, so other than obviously seeing the trophy on the front can you see that wow. that's obviously a dead giveaway but it would be hard to tell if this drove past you whether it was a 280 or a 300 so let's jump back in the car and we'll go for a bit more of a drive let's talk about how this thing handles obviously if you've seen videos previously or you even own one of these you know what I'm talking about but the way this thing eats up a corner is is you have to you have to experience it if you don't have one and you're debating getting one go test drive one because the way these things go around a corner you have to experience it it's just too good and it's so secure and like I said earlier in the video like you'd have to take the absolute piss out of this to make a mistake you really would especially when you've got the tires all warmed up and stuff like that and you know you've got if you're in race or whatever mode you're in you, you know the steering gets heavier and stuff and you can just really feel what the car's doing underneath you even if you're not you are going through a corner quite hot which i've had and you're losing a bit of grip or like you can feel a tire lifting slightly or like you know like the, that um the shifting weight then you can feel it it's so informative through the wheel and you know exactly where you are and like i say obviously the rear wheel steer isn't as um obvious at higher speeds so you can't really start laying into it and start getting into it but then you feel the rear wheel steer if you were coming up to like hairpins or slow slow um country lanes you can really feel the back end tucking you in and you feel that little bit more of agility in the in the handling and the way that it takes the corner initially just so sure in the way that it moves so sure nice having a car that's capable out the box as well you know it's fairly quick in a straight line handles great looks great sounds pretty good as well because of the valve exhaust that only comes in the trophy as well so if you're looking at the 280s you might have to do a little bit of uh, tweaking <laughs> but obviously this car is um, a modified version of a again but even like I say even standard these things are a weapon um, and you know if you look through track time and stuff and reviews they're all saying pretty much the same thing not the best thing in a straight line around a track will dominate most things um, I think it was an auto car did a really good video um, on I think it was Anglesey um, correct me if I'm wrong I'll put the link down in the description I'll put a little clip of it up here now of the Megan against the Megan trophy against the Golf TCR so that's their no rear seats you know full track version and the Megan was quicker um, I can't remember what it was as quick as around the track, but obviously Anglesey, if that was the track I'm thinking, um, that's got plenty of tight corners. Um, so the Megan was in its kind of in its element with the four wheel steer there, and uh, it did catch him out a couple of times around that track, obviously. But um, that might have been cold tyres, or he was probably still on the. 
after their bridge time potenzas, which I'm uh, glad to see the back of. Obviously, the main comparison that everyone go to between this is the Mark III. Now, the Mark III Megane, I feel, is definitely faster on a straight line, um, but I think could easily sit with or outhandle the Mark III's um, around a track or some B-Roads. Obviously, driver mod depending. These, the way these move around compared to a Mark III is, is like I say, the four-wheel steer, you can't ignore it. It's a very different experience. But slow corners and stuff like that is where this really, you know, slow, windy corners is where this really picks up some speed because the rear wheel steer, obviously, coming in, assists up to 2.7 degrees on the rear. Um, and that allows the car to be so... What's the word? Um, what's the word? Precise is the word I'm looking for. So precise on steering. And obviously this is modified, so some things of those have changed slightly. But when it comes to the actual feel of the car, the way, the excitement you feel when you drive something like this around the the world it was made for, it was made for twisties and stuff, it was made for the corners, um, you know, it just takes, it takes things into a league of its own, you know, you'll be, you'll, you'll upset some serious, serious cars around some back roads with one of these. I went in on the trophy because I previously owned a Mark IV Clio trophy. Now, that was something obviously that I, was my first taste of an auto, so I thought, jumping into one of them could be fun, never had an auto before, and I thought, let's get into one of them and see what they're about. So I did, and I loved it. It was kind of like, the, like I say, the gateway into auto, and a couple of my mates had autos at the time as well, so I got to experience a DSG, I got to experience a torque converter, so, the Clio box was all right, but compared to those two, it just wasn't as good. And then fast forward to now, where I'm in the began, where obviously the EDC box has come across. But this one is much, much more refined, and it's a much better box. Everyone said it's driven it is much, much closer to a DSG. Do I think it's as good as a DSG? Probably not. It's much more consistent, much more assertive like it knows what it wants to do it doesn't mess around between gears like the Clio did and it doesn't hold the revs for really high like you can actually be in sport mode and not have it shift at five and a half thousand rpm you know you can cruise in sport mode and it shift up gears which is a nice touch because it's nice to have obviously the valve open on the exhaust and stuff and still be cruising one thing worth mentioning is how much Renault up their uh, game interior wise now again it's not no German car in here, but it's such a such a nicer place to sit, especially than like my Mark IV, Mark IV Clio was. Um, that was by no means you know horrible interior, but it was just very plasticky, very French. And now in here you're getting half Alcantara wheel, obviously the Recaros. Um, obviously there's like all this soft touch stuff, soft touch plastics everywhere and stuff. It doesn't creak. It doesn't make all those weird squeaks and weird noises when you go over bumps. It's just so much better built in here, and that's one of the first things people say as well when they actually get in the car they're like oh Renault with an interior they just can't believe it so obviously and the black roof lining as well is a nice touch apparently for you Pano guys that isn't possible which is a shame because I would hate to have the normal grey um, roof lining over the black one this is much nicer and it feels there's a lot more confined inside especially for quite a large vehicle so my summary on this whole thing I think the RS models do get slept on by far too many people. I don't think there's enough people that know what they are capable of. Obviously, if you are into track days and you're into all that sort of stuff, you know these things are no joke. Um, the Mark III's absolutely hound people around the Nürburgring and stuff like that. You know they are a weapon. Um, and when it comes down to actually having, being able to have a car like this that hounds cars much bigger weight in its weight class on, the, on track, and be able to be your daily daily driver, you know, that's a win-win for me. It sounds like I'm being ultra biased because I've got one, um, but that is not the case, trust me, you know, like obviously with the the French perks, as always, there are some little things that will get on your nerves. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head right now. Pros and cons with having a Megane. You're gonna get beaten in a straight line by pretty much everything German. You will outhandle them pretty much around every corner and any, any track, um, obviously depending on if there's a massive straight. Um, and, Arguably, they are more fun. The thing I found with, like I say, for example, the Golf R, great car, 
at, it, at everything. It's good at everything, but it's not amazing at anything, if that makes sense. So when it comes to something like this, they excel so much at one thing, you can't help but notice that thing, and it shines so much. Anyone that's driven this will be like, yeah, this thing takes the piss around corners. And it's um, that is what they're designed for. And But I think that is the conclusion that everyone would have that dri drove one. Drove one? Wow, good English. That drove one because it's focused on one thing. Renaults are focused on one thing about, they used to be being, go being light and going fast, but obviously now they're not so light, um, just going fast, as fast as they possibly can. Now, getting into these Megane Mark 4s, like I say, they are more heavy, they are better equipped and stuff, which could hinder it on track potentially, but the majority of the time, you know, where you're gonna be going from flipping between this being your daily, I mean, I, having this as a dedicated track car, I don't know how that would go down, um, but having this as your daily and then being able to flip it and have some fun on some back roads and stuff I mean I think this is just this is the perfect mix um, obviously these cars are getting more and more um, tunable and stuff like there are companies doing tunes and stuff like that now which is great but there wasn't too much when I bought them so obviously running the stage one I know people don't like using stage terms in, in the Renault but that's what it would be considered you know it's just literally exhaust and intake and a map um, this road is super tight so if you're watching this video and you're unsure whether to get one or not, get yourself out and run a test drive on, whether it be the 280, um, 280 Cup or the softer 280 Sport or even the 300 or the 300 Trophy. What, there seems to be something for anyone that wants that more, a little bit more power but doesn't want it to be as stiff as a trophy and stuff like that. So there seems to be something, um, all boxes ticked as far as the Renault Mark IV Megane RS goes. If you're watching this video and you've already got one and I've missed anything that you think is a selling point, get it down in the comments and um, I'll make sure to pin it. Or if you are if you know someone that's looking to get one of these or toying with the idea of it, make sure you send it their way because maybe this will be the thing that tips them over the edge. As always, any questions get down at me in the comments. Massive shout out to um, Rich and Dex again for helping me out with the intro. Um, also, the GT Performance announcement, if you haven't seen it, click up there. Um, those guys are now official sponsors of the channel, spoiler alert. So it's an honor to have those guys on board. But yeah, always appreciate the support and the love um, and the feedback in the comments and stuff. Catch you in the next one. Peace.